to me as a second opinion and uh, had some results that I was, I was pleasantly surprised with, to say the least. Um, so this is a 37-year-old female, uh, referred for a second opinion, complaints of dry eyes, burning, uh, general eye pain. She says the burning is worse in the left eye than the right, uh, worse in the morning, and then as is often the case, worse with reading, using her phone, screen time, that sort of thing. Uh, occupation as a barber, so maybe a little bit less screen time than some of my other patients, but uh, probably some fans on, some circulating air, certainly not helping during the day with the dry eyes. And she'd had a lot that she tried. And, and this is, you know, one of those patients who you knew was kind of following exactly what you wanted her to do. She was, she was pretty on top of things, really wanted to feel better. And she was meticulously kind of writing down everything you said to try to follow through exactly with it. So she tried lots of artificial tears, both preserved and non-preserved, various brands, uh, ointment at night, warm compresses, uh, just, just how I normally recommend. Uh, she already had punctal plugs. She tried courses of steroids. She was already on fish oil. A lot of things, again, that I would, I would already be doing uh, in my clinic. So we can go to the next slide. Oh, oh how do I go backwards? There we go. So her exam on the, the first day I met her was, uh, was not uncommon. She, uh, she already had punctal plugs in both, both of her li lower lids. She had fairly significant meibomian gland dysfunction. That was the first thing that jumped out to me. Uh, no staining on the conjunctiva, no significant redness. And then probably the most surprising thing is she was very symptomatic in terms of her complaints, uh, but her cornea looked pretty good. A, a few punctate epithelial erosions, but not a lot of obvious dryness. Uh, the one thing though, is I kind of checked her that again, stood out was issues with the, the tear film and the meibomian glands. When I had her you know, put in a little bit of fluorescein, had her blink a few times and then keep her eyes open. And she was around two seconds in terms of her tear breakup time in both eyes. Uh, she did have a little bit of epithelial basement membrane dystrophy centrally in the left eye, which I was kind of keeping in mind, but a fairly unremarkable cornea, except for that decreased tear breakup time. And then the, I think the important, other important thing to note here is her Schirmer's test was, was perfect. I don't know if it was because of, you know, the punctal plugs or, or just that she was already producing enough tears, but the lack of tear production wasn't the problem here. I, I, uh, Restasis or Zyger or something like that wouldn't be my, my first choice because she was producing enough tears. The, the real problem just seemed to be with her meibomian glands. So we can go to the next slide. So I was a little worried about that epithelial-based membrane dystrophy on that first visit. So I told her to continue the artificial tears, continue the ointment, continue the warm compresses, certainly in the fish oil. But I did start her on some uh, FML twice a day, some doxycycline twice a day for about 10 days, uh, just to see if that would improve both the meibomian glands a little bit. And then that is kind of my standard treatment to, to medically treat people with uh, epithelial basement membrane dystrophy if they don't have an active defect. So she came back a month later. I always ask people when they come in my office, better, worse, or the same. And she said, you know, no better. Exactly the same as it was. They continue to feel dry. I didn't see, you know, didn't move the needle at all. I've been doing everything he said exactly. And it just didn't make a difference. So I stopped the FML and the doxycycline. And, and this was actually one of the first patients I treated with, imager, with the MGRX. Uh, it was back this fall. Uh, I think I got the device in, I think, October uh, and uh, or maybe late September. And uh, I, so we did the treatment, uh, just kind of as we talked about in the previous videos. And uh, I had her keep doing everything else the same sticking with the artificial tears, you know, ointment, and certainly the warm compresses. And I think that's key. Um, as a side note, I also am a big fan of the kind of dry, moist teeth that, that stays on the eye continuously. I, one of the first questions I ask any patient when they say they're using warm compresses is I say, describe to me the warm compresses that you're using. If they say they're just using a, a clean washcloth with hot water, I already know we really haven't, we haven't done much in terms of using warm compresses. So anyway, we did the treatment. Uh, a month later, she came in and she said, you know, I felt pretty darn good the day after I, I noticed improvement. But more important, to, more important to me is that she continued to show steady improvement week by week, she said, uh, even after that, that, just that one treatment. She came back into my office a couple of weeks, a couple of months later, significant improvement to the point that she really had no complaints at this point. She was just happy. She said, my eyes feel fine. I don't, uh, I'm not feeling that burning in the morning. I'm not feeling it when I'm working on my, my tablet. I just, I'm, I'm feeling normal. And that's, that's usually the, where I'm, I'm trying to get. Uh, and then as, I, as soon as I get to that point, I, I will often start to taper off some of the, the treatments we have them on to get them to the point that they're, they're not symptomatic, that the eyes are doing good, seeing good, but I don't want them doing 
you know, I want to do it as little as possible to maintain that. So I haven't seen her back since this last appointment, but we did, I told her to start tapering her tears a little bit. She could then try going off the ointment, but to continue the warm compresses in the fish oil, because I just really felt that was the underlying issue to all of this. Uh, another, when I say this was a pleasant surprise, the thing that I liked is I, I do think that epithelial basement membrane dystrophy was probably causing some issues in the past, but she wasn't having any flares of that. She wasn't waking up in the middle of the night or first thing in the morning with that sudden increase in pain. And so I think improving her tear film overall not only improved her dryness and the way she felt, but it also, I think, made it so she wasn't as likely to have a flare of that, that EBMD. So in summary, uh, this, was, this was a young, healthy patient. Uh, corneas looked pretty good, but certainly the tear breakup, decreased tear breakup time, really pointing to evaporative uh, tear film issues. She had been on lots of good treatments, and in, including warm compresses, including fish oil, including things I always recommend. And so I really just felt that the, the treatment we did in clinic kind of helped to jumpstart things. It got her over the hump. So the things that she was doing at home very, you know, meticulously, meticulously uh, continued to accelerate her recovery and, and get her on the right track. Um, and again, I think I, I often think of my severe dry patients as being older, but this day and age, I think it's better to intervene early to preserve these mybomine glands than to wait until they're all completely shot. Uh, 30 years later, and there isn't that much to save. So this was a, a relatively young patient who I, th I thought did really good. Can we do next slide? Yep. Great. So just to summarize, things that I like about, about the MGRX. Overall, it's just the flexibility to use the tool how I want to use it, when I want to use it, um, by treating different parts of the lid, I can adapt the pressure to the patient. I can adapt the duration a little bit if I want. I'm really in control of, of what the patient needs instead of having kind of a set uh, kind of thing where I just push a button and then don't have any contact with the patient. Uh, some patients need, need more debridement. Some patients need uh, maybe a little bit longer heat, uh, a little bit more intense uh, expression. Some maybe don't tolerate the expression quite as, as well as others do, so I can decrease a little bit because I'm actively doing it. Uh, the, uh, the other thing is that I, I've started to kind of uh, trust some of my staff to do parts of it. So I'm, I'm basically at this point, uh, depending on the patient, maybe doing the debridement, I have the staff uh, do the heating and I come in at the end to, to do the, the expression so that I, I can kind of see for myself uh, exactly what's going on. The other thing I will say just that, cause I've kind of been experimenting with it and how it works best for our clinic. I will often actually use like a mask for the 10 or 15 minutes before my uh, staff gets into the room just to kind of preheat the glands, get things going so that we're already kind of ahead of the game and everything else that we're then actively doing in that treatment is, is working that much better. And, uh, and then probably the biggest thing for me, I like the flexibility to charge my patients what they, what I want. I, I don't want to have a, a high, baseline that I'm having to charge them to even break even on the device, not even counting my time or my staff's time. I've, I've been looking for a product for a, several years that could effectively treat MGD without having to charge the patient's an arm and a leg uh, to get this type of, of treatment. So that is my experience. I think um, I saw something pop up in the chat. Does anybody have any questions for me about what we're doing? Yeah, I was just taking a look to see if I could uh, find uh, any questions, but I didn't see any specific. Um, I did have a question, maybe, um, Dr. Hooten, that probably everybody is wondering, and, and I don't know if you mentioned it or not. Uh, what are you charging patients, and how is that going? So I, I'm a little bit, I, a little bit, as you can kind of tell, I'm a little bit on the, the low end of things in terms of what I charge patients. I, I need to probably become a little bit more comfortable asking yeah. to charge for something that actually is really effective, but we're charging a, a $300 a treatment right now. Uh, I've played with the idea of maybe doing four treatments for a thousand dollars and seeing how that goes, but uh, it's gone well in the sense that I, I don't really feel like I have to sell the treatment. That's really not something I'm good at, not something I want to be doing. So I have kind of a, a menu, a plan of different options we have for, for treating dry eyes. And I, I talk about different options, different recommendations. Uh, one thing I will say with the MGRX is I, I tell patients that I'm always a big fan of warm compresses at home, but if they just don't feel like they can get that done, this is a way that we can kind of either jumpstart or at least kind of quicken the pace. Um, and so once we've tried two or three things, it just kind of ends up that this is the next best step. They've maybe made some improvement, but they want to make more. So in the end, uh, yeah, some people say it's too expensive for them and that's fine. 
but I've been surprised how many people just want to press forward with the next step and see the results. Uh, and then I, that does bring me to another point. I do have some patients who I just know can't even pay $25 if they had it. They just, they just don't have it. And mm -hmm. I, I like to be able in those rare cases to be able to offer someone something to a patient without, you know, having to explain to my partners where I'm taking a, why I'm taking a $400 loss on a visit with some patients that I'm having to use a disposable for to, uh, to treat this patient. So yeah, most of my patients are, are paying that happily and having, you know, good results. But if I need to just, you know, cut the price or, or, or do something pro bono, then I have that as an option. And it, it makes me really happy that I can offer that in those rare circumstances. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a nice, that is a nice thing to be able to do. And, and also, as you mentioned, you know, I, for myself, who've been looking at this market, you know, for eight years, um, I, and just knowing a lot of docs that we work with, you know, the, the position you don't want to be in is when you charge them a thousand or $1,200 and they got one treatment and six months later, they're going to need another treatment possibly, right? We don't know. Every patient's different. And I've heard that story told many, many times. And I think, like you said, with this pricing or create a package, um, you know, two or three treatments and it's X price. Um, it, it kind of puts the power in your hands and you don't have a fixed cost, you know, once you bought. Right. So. That's a big deal. I do see a, a question here. How often do you recommend follow-up treatments? So for me, I'm still filling that out a little bit. Um, I, I've started just kind of scheduling patients about four months out to see how they're doing. I had one patient who thought it was great and she's like, I want to do this again in a month. We got to, we got to, we got to see what we can do. Um, and so I did it a month and I felt good about that because I, you know, and, and they saw good results, but that's what I've been starting with is checking in in four months for a lot of my patients. I've even made that four month appointment, seeing how they're doing. And then if we need to repeat at that time, that's, that's kind of what I'm planning on. And again, I can do that because the price point is such that I don't feel like I'm yeah, it's it's too much to ask, and and I and just another side note for me, I, I'm in a pretty you know fairly rural area, so you know you get these farmers coming in who have terrible dry eyes, and they they're not ready to drop you know several thousand dollars on a treatment. They they want to get in and see what they can do, and, and see a little bit of the results before they they proceed to the next few treatments. Sure, sure. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for that. And if any other questions, I've only got a few more slides here and then and we can wrap, but I uh, really appreciate that. And uh, if any other questions pop in there, let's uh, we'll, we'll just have you jump in. No problem.